If you don't think your customer experience impacts how potential customers view your company, then you might want to listen to what my guest has to say. You can grow any business, uh, B2B or B2C, by turning your customers into volunteer marketers. In business to business, 91% of all purchases are influenced by word of mouth. I have a conversation with New York Times bestselling author and president of Convince and Convert, Jay Baer, about his new book, Talk Triggers, on this episode of the CX Leader Podcast. The CX Leader Podcast with Steve Walker is produced by Walker, a business consulting firm that helps our clients unlock the potential of their customer experiences by placing the customer at the heart of all their business decisions. You can find out more at walkerinfo.com. Hello, I'm Steve Walker, Chairman and CEO of Walker Information and also the host of the CX Leader Podcast, and thank you for listening. On the CX Leader Podcast, we explore topics and themes to help leaders like you leverage all the benefits of customer experience and help your customers and prospects want to do more business with you. A big thanks to all of our listeners for the success of the podcast. It really has become the place for CX leaders and business executives who want to drive business value through uh, being customer and employee focused. We thank you for your continued listenership and subscribing to the podcast and can't wait to keep producing great content for you. Well, on this episode, I am delighted and honored to have a New York Times bestselling author, and one of the most dynamic and thought-provoking speakers in the customer experience space. Jay Baer is the president of Convince & Convert, a strategy consulting firm that helps companies gain and keep more customers, and Jay's worked with over 700 brands in his career. And his most recent book, called Talk Triggers, is just released on October 2nd. I've had the privilege of having Jay speak at our conferences and our events, And I also can tell you from personal experience that uh, he is a remarkable presenter. People don't even want to look at their phones when when Jay's talking. So, uh, Jay, thanks for uh, joining us. I know you're via Skype today. Thank you for being on the CX Leader Podcast. Steve, fantastic to be back with you, and and thank you for the kind words and your support. Hello to all your listeners. Looking forward to chatting. Jay, you know, I know you well, and you've been a great friend of ours, and uh, I know you get out there and you're constantly on the road talking to CX leaders. So if you wouldn't mind, just give our listeners a little more background of how your career has evolved and, and sort of how you came to be the leading thinker in this space. I'm a seventh generation entrepreneur, so it was sort of preordained that I would do something like this eventually. I started out in politics, actually, so it's always interesting. This time of year is fascinating for me. I was a political campaign consultant as a uh, young professional and, and realized that that business is is uh, not super stable. <laughs> and so I, I, I left or, or, uh, or, or comforting. So I left that career path and, and went to work for the government for about 20 minutes. And then I, uh, I started... Um, accidentally in the in the internet business. It's a true story, Steve. I don't know if I ever told you this, but uh, I got involved accidentally in, in digital marketing and digital customer experience at the very, very, very beginning, in 1993. So this is my 25-year anniversary of being in the space. And when I got involved, uh, domain names were free. You, you could buy whatever domain name you wanted for nothing because who would want to have a website? Like, what would be the point of having a website? And in my first internet company, Uh, In 93, my partner and I, we sold Budweiser.com to Anheuser-Busch for 50 cases of beer. And (laughs) we genuinely thought that we got, like, such a super good deal. Uh, That's a lot of beer, man. Of course, I was the senior partner at the ripe age of 23, so you can see where our priorities were. But that's how long I've been doing this. And and so uh, over the the subsequent 25 years, I've had a number of uh, consulting firms working on digital strategy, digital customer experience, uh, social media strategy, et cetera. Now we're doing a lot of work on on word of mouth strategy, which is interesting because it it really is a a sort of Venn diagram confluence uh, between marketing and CX. Yeah, I want to talk uh, just a little bit about your background a little more because a couple things you said are really interesting, and I think they follow some of the trends that I've observed. When you tell me the story about the 50 cases of Bud, it kind of harkens up to Wayne's world. I got $5,000. I got $5,000. <laughs> yeah, that is exactly right. And you thing, wasted the rest of the stuff, too, after you got the 50 cases of beer. We did. And then, and then the, about six months later, uh, we get a call from Guinness Brewing. 
uh, the makers of Guinness Stout, among yep. other beers, and we're like, okay, look, we're not gonna we're not gonna sell so cheaply this time. You can't fool us twice. Uh, so we sold that domain name for uh, two trips to Ireland and uh, two brewery tours. <laughs> I like the way so, you were operating, man. Slowly, slowly but surely, slowly but surely. But then the, the the real the real kicker of this story, Steve, is that my partner uh, registered some domain names when I was on vacation. So my name was not on them, only his, right? So it wasn't a joint registration. It was a solo registration. And one of those, beer.com, he sold eventually to Molson Brewing for $5.1 million. Wow. And he has never worked a day since, and, and here I am doing your podcast. So <laughs> you never really know. Well, I wonder who's more fulfilled at this point. That's right. I certainly have a lot to do, and uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't trade it for the world. Uh, you know, seriously, though, a couple things you said, you know, number one is you reinforced the concept that most people got into this business by accident. I mean, you, sure. you didn't set out to be a word-of-mouth CX expert. And then the other thing is you came that out was of... Not, that was not part of the curriculum at my university. <laughs> was, no, no, it wasn't. And, and I think that's true. We see with, with a lot of our listeners and a lot of CX leaders is, is nobody really trained to do this. They were just, you know, it, it was something that they were passionate about. They had the skill set. Somebody said, hey, you know, gave them an opportunity along the way. The other thing I think is interesting is you came out of political science, which is another thing I see is many of the CX leaders today, they have their background in social sciences. You know, most of them are like social sociologists, psychology majors and political science, history. And, and uh, so it is, it, you know, it is interesting that you see that pattern happening with these people. And I think there's probably some reasons for that, because it's what we're talking about is why people do the things they do, right? Yeah, you know, the, the, there's the saying that all politics is local, and and that way of thinking is particularly useful when you consider CX and the and the need to make every customer interaction feel special and memorable and 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 dialed in. Uh, it, it's also very applicable to the work that I have done and do in social media because social media sort of takes a, a large collection of people and makes it feel more local. And so my my political background certainly helps there. Yeah, and, you know, again, from my background and my perspective, which is more data-driven, um, you know, if you look at the emergence of what marketing research started, it was about the same time that political polling became a science, too. Yes, yes, um, so absolutely. That, you know, it, it, it was, it's, the, it's one of the oldest arts, <laughs> but the science has really come along in the last, say, probably less than 100 years, probably 50 years, really. In fact, uh, my advisor uh, in college, University of Arizona, go Wildcats. Uh, my advisor was a was a pioneering uh, political pollster and did lots and lots of work uh, in this. In fact, I was a journalism major originally. Like all I ever wanted to do was was be uh, was be Bob Woodward or or something like that, right? And go and go report for the Post. I was like high school journalism nerd, and that's all I wanted to do. And then I, I ended up uh, taking an introduction to political science course that had a lot of emphasis on political campaigning. And I was hooked. I was hooked in five seconds. Yep. I was like, this is this is one of what I do. And my advisor ended up being a pollster, and and uh, I still do a lot of research. It's one of the things that that I kind of hang my hat on in the books that I write is that we do a lot of proprietary first party research, more so than a lot of business authors do. And and some of that I think goes all the way back to the early days where I was, uh, you know, I was sort of um, mentored by somebody whose whose career was at least in part uh, based on research. Yeah. And actually, uh, that's why I started the podcast, because I wanted to be Johnny Carson when I was growing up. <laughs> well, you know, I <laughs> you're doing a hell of a job. We needed Ed McMahon on this show uh, is, is, is what we need. Uh, yeah. I, that's right. I, I I was named most likely to be a game show host in high school. That's a true story. Yeah, you'd be uh, a good one. I, I, I tell you what, this is true. Um, if anything ever happens to Drew Carey, I mean, God bless him. Like, I'm not, you know, I'm not wishing the man ill. Uh, Price is right, like baby. Come on down. Yeah, but Price is right is A, my favorite show. Uh, and, and B, I could kill that job. So, I mean, <laughs> if, 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 and I'm, I am seriously, I'm not saying this for effect on your show. If I got a call from the Price is Right people saying, hey, would you like to be our host? Drew doesn't want to do it anymore. I would sell this company in 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. I would be out. Move to L.A. <laughs> One of the only jobs that I would do other than this job, uh, but that is that is the dream gig for me. <laughs> All right. We have digressed, and I apologize for that, but you're always – I thought this is what the show was about. <laughs> it kind of is. But we got to you know, deliver a little value for the CX leaders. All right. All right. Well, you got a new book that's come out called uh, Talk Triggers. Yeah. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? 
It's about how you can grow any business, uh, B2B or B2C, by turning your customers into volunteer marketers. Now, one of the great successes of Walker is that your customers are very satisfied and they tell other similar organizations about the great work you do, and that produces new customers uh, for the firm. And the same thing is true for a number of great brands, right? Word of mouth is the original way to acquire customers, like, you know, back in the day when a caveman sold a rock to another caveman, like all we had was word of mouth. And then somebody painted like a coupon on a wall, and that was the first outdoor board or something. But back in the day, it was only word of mouth. And it's still extraordinarily important. In business to business, 91% of all purchases are influenced by word of mouth. 91%, right? That That is extraordinary. Yet here's the crazy part about this and the reason that my co-author Daniel Lemon and I wrote the book. Nobody has a strategy for it. So you, you have a marketing strategy, probably. You probably have a, a, a social media strategy, a, a customer service strategy, certainly a CX strategy if you're listening to this show. But the one thing you almost assuredly do not have is a word of mouth strategy. Everybody does word of mouth on accident instead of doing word of mouth on purpose. So what this book, Talk Triggers, the complete guide to creating customers with word of mouth, what the book does is it gives you an actual system for how to create a differentiator in your business that customers notice and talk about. Yeah, I want to come back to that because we always want to have our listeners get some take-home value. But you mentioned that 91% of uh, purchases have some element of word of mouth and also that, yeah. that you know most organizations don't really try to manage that. But give us a little more color on, on how impactful word of mouth is and what the trends are too. It's about 83% of Americans have made some sort of word of mouth recommendation or referral. And it's interesting because generationally, younger Americans tend to use word of mouth even more than older Americans. So insofar as every business is thinking about how do we um, seize that millennial opportunity, how do we seize that Gen Z opportunity, word of mouth is exceptionally uh, important for, for those groups as well. And one of the interesting stats that we found recently in some research that we've conducted is that half of Americans, fully half of Americans, would choose word of mouth if they could only have one way to figure out what to buy. Wow. So if, if you couldn't have, you know, TV or Google or um, ratings and reviews websites or, or social media or a newspaper or the news, half of all Americans said, yeah, I want word of mouth. And here's the thing. Word of mouth, I believe, and, and, and the research bears this out, is actually more important than it's ever been, despite the fact that it's literally been around for hundreds of thousands of years, because we trust each other more than ever. And we trust organizations and businesses less than ever, right? So so if 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 I tell you, hey, you should go see this movie, that carries disproportionate weight in comparison to the advertisement for the movie. Yeah, and, and uh, the way you set that up in terms of it's even more important to the younger generation, there, there's your growth market there too. Oh, absolutely. And And one of the things that's important to note, I think, is that when we talk about word of mouth, we, we mean both offline, so what we're doing here, face-to-face, -face, phone, et cetera, and online, social media, ratings and reviews, websites, et cetera. Now, the, the data show that about 50% of all word of mouth takes place online, and about 50% takes place offline. The offline part has more persuasive power, as you might suspect, right? So yep. if you and I are having an actual conversation like we are right now, and I make a recommendation to you, that's going to carry more weight than if you see me post it on Facebook. Both matter, but offline has a little more oomph to it, as you might suspect. Hi, I'm Chris Higgins, producer of the CX Leader Podcast. I want to take a moment to thank you for listening to the CX Leader Podcast. We really enjoy being a source of information and inspiration for customer experience professionals. And we know you have some stories to share. With Halloween just around the corner, we'd like to have a little fun and share some CX horror stories. If you've got a story to share that is truly scary within the customer experience realm, send them to us. You can record them with your phone or computer and post them to LinkedIn, Facebook, or Twitter with the hashtag CXHorrorStory. Or feel free to email them to Steve at steve.walker at walkerinformation.com. We can't wait to hear what scares you as a customer experience professional. Thanks again for listening.
My guest this week on the uh, CX Leader podcast is a best-selling author and inspirational marketing and online customer service speaker, Jay Baer, who's also president of Convince and Convert, and uh, we're talking about all things CX, and specifically his new book that's out called Talk Triggers. Jay, now I see the connection to why, you know, you, your background with politics and then all matters, you know, all politics is local and what we're, you know, what we're really seeking is this sense of community, even though, you know, we're in a big, you know, broad mass media, mass marketing, fast changing world. That That's really what people are yearning for, right? They're yearning for, you know, more intimacy and more back to the kind of the old ways. And, and, and the finding that the young people are more depending on recommendations and friends, that in, in some ways, I see a lot of the reasons why this trend would be occurring. Yeah. And for young people, they're, they're so comfortable with, with data and sourcing, right? And, and sort of the idea of wisdom of the crowds, right? Like I've got yep. uh, kids who are, who are 17 and 20, and, and they wouldn't think of making a purchase without looking at reviews. I mean, it just it's it, it they, they can't even conceptualize how why would you do that? Why would you not rely on that information source? But what's interesting about word of mouth in particular is that businesses, especially B2B, but all businesses make the mistake of thinking that competency creates conversation. This idea that if we deliver a good customer experience, people will talk about us. That isn't necessarily true because all of your competitors are also good. So to to become talkable, you have to deliver a CX that is noticeably better. That's a high bar to clear. So what we talk about in the book is maybe your CX, or at least part of your CX, should focus on doing something different. So we define a talk trigger as a strategic operational differentiator that compels conversation. It's something that you do differently that people notice and then talk about. And when they talk about it, it brings you new customers for free. Wow, that's, you know, I was gonna ask you because one of the really cool things about your report here that's out and, and a big part of the new book is what people rely on and how does this word of mouth convert into actual business performance? And I think that's that's the whole concept, the strategic operation yeah, I mean, the, the thing about it is we, we say word of mouth marketing all the time, right? That That is a, a, a piece of the lexicon. But a talk trigger isn't really marketing. It's an operational choice that you make. It is a CX decision path that subsequently creates a marketing advantage, it's something that you do differently, not something that you say differently, right? A, a talk trigger, uh, like all CX, isn't isn't a price. It's not a promotion. It's not a campaign. It's not a coupon. It is something that you choose to do. I'll give you an example. Um, many listeners, I'm sure, are familiar with the fact that DoubleTree Hotels by Hilton gives out a warm chocolate chip cookie to each guest when they check in. Now, they've been doing this every day for 30 years they now give out 75,000 cookies per day worldwide. The question then becomes, why? Well, my co-author and I interviewed several hundred Doubletree guests, and we found that 34% of them have, without being asked or aided, mentioned that cookie to somebody else in the prior 30 days. The math on that then, Steve, is that approximately 25,500 people per day talk about that cookie, either online or offline. That is the CX-driven word-of-mouth engine that moves that brand onward and upward every single day. Companion question, when's the last time you saw a Doubletree ad? I don't think they do much, do they? The cookie is the ad. The guests are the marketing. The CX becomes the driver of growth. And the best CX, talkable CX, does exactly that. That is a perfect lead into my key question I ask every guest on every podcast is take home value. I'm a CX professional. I'm intrigued with the thoughts that Jay Bear is is laying out here. I'm going to buy the book online right now. What do I do about this now? How do I actually operationalize this in my company? What's the first few steps I could take starting tomorrow to, to move my organization further down? 
Here's the problem that a lot of CX professionals have, and, and I, I, you probably know this as, as well as anybody in the world. A lot of CX pros are hamstrung by the fact that they are thought to be engines of retention in their business. If we have good CX, we will keep more customers. And that's mm-hmm. a worthy goal. Don't get me wrong. I wrote a whole book about that called Hug Your Haters. It's a worthy goal, and it's an important goal. But what we can do with talk triggers is we can say, let's deliver a CX that also gets new customers. Let's turn our customers into a marketing force. And that changes the entire value proposition of CX in the organization. But the only way that works is to first map your customer journey. And then what we recommend is do a lot of customer interview work to understand in a very specific capacity what your customers expect from your organization at each of those inflection points. Because once you know what they expect, then you can deliver what they don't expect. And the difference between what they expect and what they don't expect, that delta is where your talk trigger comes from. Jay, is there anything that uh, we haven't covered here that you want to make sure that our listeners got from today's podcast? One thing I'll mention to you, because I think you'll find it interesting, is the book itself, uh, which is about talk triggers, has, of course, talk triggers. So the actual book is is hot pink uh, and has alpacas on the cover. So you might see it in an airport bookstore or somewhere else. If you see a, a business book with alpacas, I'm almost positive it's going to be uh, talk triggers. I, I feel confident in that. On the back cover of the book, Steve, you'll you'll appreciate this. It says... In big letters, satisfaction guaranteed. If you bought this book and didn't like it, go to talktriggers.com and send the authors a note. They will buy you any other book of your liking. And I will. That is absolutely true. You don't like the book, I'll buy you whatever you want. You want a first edition Bible, we'll take care of it. Uh, you just let us know. <laughs> wow, that that is uh, that is a strong uh, offer and I think sure to uh, generate some word of mouth. I hope nobody actually takes us up on that in the first edition Bible because it could be a little pricey, but uh, we'll see what happens. Hey, Jay, uh, thanks again for being a part of the CX Leader podcast and for uh, all the good will that you spread throughout the uh, industry and, and just your positive, upbeat approach to, to life and to business. Uh, thanks so much. Fantastic to talk to you. I appreciate the opportunity. And uh, Drew Carey, if you're listening, uh, stay well. Yeah, well... I don't know about that, man. We we already got his backup. Right. I'm ready. You want to also let our listeners know how they might be able to get in touch with you? Yeah, you bet. Uh, TalkTriggers.com is the website for the book. There's all kinds of extra stuff there. There's videos, infographics, uh, book club downloads, free presentation templates that you can use in your organization, all kinds of free stuff at TalkTriggers.com. Uh, my main site with all of our research, our blogs, our podcasts, everything else is at ConvinceAndConvert.com. Thank you, and uh, really encourage all of our CX listeners to uh, get a copy of Talk Triggers, as well as your other books, and put this into your overall CX strategy and plan. It'll be a, a good investment for you. And if you'd like to talk about anything else we've discussed on this or other podcasts, you can feel free to contact me at steve.walker at walkerinformation.com, or you can call me here in the U.S., plus one, three one seven eight four three eight eight nine zero. Don't hesitate to reach out to me or any of the other great people here at Walker. We'd love to tell you more. Don't forget to subscribe to the CX Leader Podcast. You can go to walkerinfo.com slash podcast, and you'll find links to iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play. And we're also on our own YouTube channel as well, youtube.com slash walkerinformation. Thanks for listening to this episode of the CX Leader Podcast, which is a production of Walker. We are a business consulting firm that can help you make customer experience your biggest competitive advantage. Find out more at walkerinfo.com. Thanks again for tuning into this podcast, and we look forward to having you back again next time.